So even though tutorials will help you learn and improve your skill set, they don't really help much or at all when it comes to landing a job or improving your resume. No one will ever recommend you to just put on your resume tutorials or courses that you've done, but they will recommend that you put projects. That comes down to the fact that you just struggle when you put a project together from scratch and you don't really struggle as much or encounter that, that those many challenges with tutorials because tutorials lay everything out for you. Step one, step two, step three, step four, and whatnot. So today I'm going to tell you where you can find ideas on projects to build. And then I'm going to show you sort of some best practices and some things you should include in your projects once you have built them or as you're building them or whatnot. With all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft and here on YouTube and welcome to a new video. So what I recommend people is to just go to the architecture center. I'm going to go into the Azure one now. Every cloud platform has them. Architecture centers are essentially a collection of a bunch of different architectures that are put together by a variety of people who will work at that cloud for different reasons. If maybe it's they got it from customer feedback, uh, examples of things they've implemented. Yeah, a bunch of different reasons. So the best way I think to go about this is to kind of just look up a service or a technology that you want to become more familiar with. Maybe it's something that you've done a course on. Maybe it's something that you're studying for a certification on, whatever it is, right? I always give the example of the Azure Pet Store, which was a colleague, Chris, who is a solution architect at Azure. He was studying for his 204 certification and decided to create this project called the Azure Pet Store, all using services that he was studying for that certification. And he has an awesome project because of that. Now, for example, I've, go I've searched here for container apps and then there's a bunch of options here. I'm gonna pick this one here because I think this is a great example. Now, not all of them will be as well documented as this one, but there are a bunch that are like this. So you're going to have to go and kind of filter through which one you like the most and which one interests you the most in general. But for example, here we've got deploy microservices with Azure container apps and Dapper. Sounds like a pretty interesting project. Container apps, serverless applications, serverless containers, microservices, Dapper. These are all very, very popular uh, services in the last couple of years. So would be a great project to get hands on. The cool thing about this specific scenario is you have information on potential use cases. You've got a diagram, data flow. You've got what components and technologies you'll need to use, some alternatives, scenario details here as well, considerations, reliability, cost optimization, performance, efficiency, deploy the scenario, contributors. Oh, and they even have the code that you can use to deploy. Now, this is fantastic because I constantly tell people it's not just about the technical skill set. It's not just be able to, oh, I know how to create this application. It's understanding why you have to create that application in the first place, what matters, how much it's going to cost, all, all, just all these bunch of things. So a lot of these architectures and examples will have these, um, you know, additional resources. And you can see there's a bunch of links in here, right? So if we looked for, I don't know, another one, let's look for functions. Um, there's a bunch in here. I liked, I think I saw one that was pretty interesting at one point that I wanted to do, uh, cause I come in here all the time to grab ideas for demos that I want to build for, uh, events and whatnot. Uh, this was pretty cool. Instant broadcasting with serverless code, but you can see some of these are, for example, this one just says it's a solution idea. Uh, so it's, it's a solution idea as in it's not as fleshed out as these other ones, but it gives you kind of an idea of data flow components, scenario details, potential use cases and whatnot. So depending on your level of expertise, this might be more than enough for you to get started, or you might need a more developed and fleshed out concept like the one we saw before, right? So yeah, go into your architecture center, find something and start from there. It's not supposed to have everything laid out for you. You need to struggle and piece the things together, but the good thing about piecing things together and sort of, you know, doing something more challenging than following a step-by-step -step tutorial is each step that you try to do and you fail at, that is a piece of information that you should document because for example, let me show you, I have a project here that I feel like is something that I would showcase on a resume if I needed to in my, this is a serverless crypto tickers, uh, just to finish this point, but then we'll go through everything. 
I have uh, a section that's known issues. And so for example, if I was trying to create a list of things of like uh, bugs that I've worked on, that I've encountered, things that I'm actually fixing in the specific project, I would put it in the section. And any challenges that you encountered, I would also highly recommend that you have that section inside of this project or not. So for example, my read, my, the readme for this GitHub, because for this, for this GitHub repo, contains all the information that I would like a potential employer or just anyone who comes across this to have. And I highly recommend you to have all your like projects and whatnot on GitHub and well-documented readme too. And then if you have, well, you should have your cloud resume, you should link to this. Mine doesn't because I don't really use it as a resume, but I'll update it at some point, all right? So anyway, here we have the title of the project, of course, and then just a brief, this one line, two line description, and then I have the link to it live here. If you can have it deployed, highly recommend it. A lot of services out there have free tiers or run for you know uh, a couple of bucks, especially the serverless, the ones that offer serverless plans. And when it comes to learning, I always tell people, like if you have to end up paying 20, 30 bucks a month to have your stuff running, that's worth it. That's like a Netflix subscription is like $20 a month. Like, come on, you can afford to put in the money to learn with an actual cloud account, right? So anyway, mine's deployed there. I have my architecture diagram here. The interesting thing about this is this is, a, this is actually two architectures because the project is taking it from the starter project to the completed project. So I've included both of those in here. So there are diagrams for each one of those. So. Not super complex or anything, straightforward, get the picture across. Then I have a little bit more of in-depth information on the starter, but you can see I have links galore. There are links to absolutely everything because these were the documentations and just references that I used when I was trying to put the thing together because you are going to build things from scratch by piecing information together from other places. Again, nothing is brand new. You're not inventing any of this, but if you can sort of document all of these things, the next person is going to come and maybe build on your solution or needs to understand more deeply your solution or you need to better explain your solution, you'll have the documentation that you reference there, right? Uh, so I talk a little bit more about the starter architecture, the completed architecture and whatnot. Then, and this is a part that I really like that I did here, the steps to go from starter to completed. Now, if you clone all my code and you adjust your local settings.json, to include the connection strings and keys and whatnot that you need from your created Azure resources, you can have it going on your, on your on your own. Like you don't really need to build anything or whatnot. You just need to edit that, right? However, I've provided guidelines and advice and steps for anyone who wants to take my start architecture and turn it into the complete architecture, because this is going to get you hands on with Azure Functions, with Cosmos DB, with Signal R, uh, Azure Blob Storage, and a couple of other services in a lot. So I've also included those things here. So I have some docs that I found helpful when building the project and sort of just some steps. Now here, I'm not telling you put this line of code here, put this line of code there, put this line of code there. I'm not. I'm telling you things like, oh, create a class that will describe your object. Mine is here. Creating a function, Azure function with a timer trigger. I set mine to 60 seconds, but you can adjust the occurrence to whatever you'd like. Mine, you can find here, and then I'll color the other guidelines that you need here too. Create an Azure function with HTTP trigger that will act as your signal or negotiate. Mine is negotiate.cs. Now, I'm just telling you, this is kind of what you got to do. You're going to go and Google, how do I actually do this? And maybe you'll probably use the documentation that I've linked above here, which are pretty long. Like this one's pretty long. Like it says here, two minutes to read, but there's a bunch of other things that you need to like go through as you walk through these. Like for example, the stuff down here, right? So I'm giving you guidelines and I'm doing that for the API part and then for the client part as well. I'm not telling you step one, step two, step three, step four, and whatnot, right? But essentially it becomes like not only a project for myself, but a project for other people, which I think is pretty cool. Finally, I have included steps on how to run locally. Uh, again, links to everything that you need here. And another thing that I like here is I say all the prerequisites from this documentation, which is again, another longer thing that people will have to take some time to go through. Uh, another important thing that I feel like people should include are debugging steps. Now, this is a very developer focused type project. And I know a lot of you may not be interested in developer type projects, but debugging isn't specific just to code and development. Like you could use this in a bunch of different scenarios. So whatever debugging is for you, include those steps in here. So for example, I've, I've got some custom 
uh, VS Code tasks, and I've linked to learning a little bit more about debug debugging and the launch.json uh, and tasks.json files would do. But then I tell you which tasks will do what and whatnot. And then I've got some known issues. Now, for example, I know that my dev container.json, which will enable code spaces support and dev container spaces, get uh, dev container supports locally. I have the file, but I know it's not working, though it's not really a major, like it doesn't block the project from working. So it's sort of just a work in progress, but it's a known issue. I also know that I don't have CI CD. I've also noted that in here. And there's also a couple of other code performance enhancements that I want to do, and I want to document in here first. Uh, so this could potentially even be like someone will be like, oh, hey, and I encourage anyone here, if anyone wants to implement a CI CD for this project and then do a PR, I would highly recommend you give that a try. And then I will have you on my channel and we can talk about the project and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this is also could potentially be come into like if you open source a project, tasks that other people could do. And then any other additional resources that I find useful, I will have in here as well. So documented well project. I think this is a good example. Not to toot to my own horn, but hey, I've seen a lot of cloud projects in my day. I've done a lot of cloud projects in my day. And I've done a lot of speaking to my cloud projects in my day as well. So it's kind of like what I recommend the bare minimum. If you want to do absolute more, go ahead and do it. But just remember, it's all about the sort of piecing things together from scratch where you get the value and where you can actually develop that skill set. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's all I got for this video. I will see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to check out my vlog channel if you like behind the scenes and just lifestyle and living in New York kind of stuff. All right, bye.